Hey everyone, it's Etherstar. Sorry about the previous video I put out. I was completely unaware about how fucked up the audio settings were. It should be much, much better in this one where you can actually hear what it is I'm saying. So right now I'm just going to go back into my thoughts on White Mage and Astrologian and Dawn Trail. Once again, this video is not going to have any spoilers whatsoever for Dawn Trail, so you can feel free to watch it without feeling like I'm going to spoil something about the story for you. It's all just going to be me talking about the gameplay of the two region healers. So just going over my pros and cons for White Mage. Again, brain dead as fuck. This class legitimately does not require that much effort to play well, in my opinion, as long as you follow some core principles that one of them being making sure you burn lilies every 20 seconds so that you never overcap and you're able to put out Aphlos Misery every minute for damage purposes and also because you want to make sure you have it at the two minute for your burst windows because if that shit crits, it's going to do a fair amount of damage honestly. You just want it to crit because it has the power of four glares behind it. And speaking of that two minute, another pro is that it has a lot of instant casts in this two minute burst window, so that paired with the fact that it also has ethereal shift means that it's just the most mobile healer right now out of them all right now. And it's just, if you want a healer that can easily roll his GCD while having to do mechanics and doesn't require that much effort to play, this is the healer for you, honestly. Speaking of that, though, I will mention that even though it is very easy to play, players that struggle with the basic fundamentals of just playing healer in this game in general will struggle with some aspects. One of those being the GC uptime that I mentioned, as well as just making sure they never overcap on lilies, because if you overcap on lilies, you lose out on potential damage, which is really bad. Now, one thing I will say about that skill gap between like the ceiling and floor of like a bad or good white mage is that it only affects the damage dealt. As far as healing output is concerned, you can expect a bad white mage to produce sufficient healing. Like a great white mage will probably do more, like, but it won't be to such a discrepancy that the party will just fucking die to raid wise and shit because you're just not topped off. So because of that, it's kind of a very good choice for PF play because even though you do have that discrepancy in damage dealt, if you are a good white mage, you can do a lot of good personal damage in your party finders because of that. Because the thing about the damage between astrology and white mage is that Astro's Divination provides more raid DPS in the setting that people are pressing their buttons correctly. And you can't really hope that in Party Finder you're going to have people that actually know what they're doing in that regard, unfortunately. And then another big thing about White Mage is that they, unlike their counterpart, are able to play either proactively or reactively. And depending on the kind of player you are, that's good in that you don't have to put in much effort or think really hard when it comes to actually what you do with your healing tools. You could just say, oh, maybe I can just, you know, lean back and have Cure 3 or Medica 2 or Medica 3 handle my problems, even though that is, you know, damage loss in this way if you're not using it in the most optimal way possible. Now, that being said, though, I personally don't like playing White Mage, is why I have it being not fun to play as a con. It's okay if you find it enjoyable, but for me personally, I just feel that in all my time playing this at level 100 and just in leveling it from 90 to 100, I had more fun with Ethereal Shift 
than the rest of the toolkit just because ethereal shift is something that you have to proactively think about how to use as a white mage since it functions specifically like dancers on Avant. So you want to just make sure that your space and position properly in places so that you don't accidentally like ethereal shift into a death wall or ethereal shift off the, the whole arena, right? So I find that the mobility that it grants is very good and had a lot of value in the most recent extremes that we have out for Dawn Trail right now. And then another con, not many party mitigation tools. We only have Temperance and Divine Crest. And even though I do like Divine Crest, I will say that I don't like that it only lasts for 10 seconds. Okay, so like the buff for it to use the ability lasts for 30 seconds, the buff to actually press it. But when you actually do use the ability, it only lasts for 10 seconds. It would be a lot better if you had the option, or I say not if you have the option more so that if they buffed it, so that it could last for 30 seconds, the shield duration of it. That, I, I think that is like a, would be a huge buff or change. And another change I would also personally like to see is to not have caress tie to temperance because I feel like if you have a tie to temperance, even though you do have a 30 second leeway between the two casts, I feel that just restricts its usage even more at the end of the day because you still have to use it when Tempest is active so I'm not a really a big fan of that honestly and then last but not least compared to Astrologian it has slower GCD heal cast time so for example when you cast Astrologian's Helios or Helios Conjunction it has about like 1.95 cast time, I believe, something around that. And then, meanwhile, White Mages is closer to like the actual like GCD timer of a 2.5. And depending on the situation, that could that could potentially make or break when you consider the fact that heals propagate in this game, and as well as you know the application times and all that other type of stuff. So, I will say that that type of stuff has costed lives before for me in in the past in like specific situations just because of the fact that there is that cast time difference because like i said as a white mage you are able to play reactively in situations if you feel something went bad or went south and now you have to go into a recovery situation right so that's about all i'll say about white mage for now so now going into astrologen this is definitely one of my favorite healers to play, mostly because of how satisfying it feels when you play it well. And speaking of playing it well, it has a lot of mitigation tools compared to a white mage. You have neutral sec, which basically turns you into a shield healer for 20 seconds. You have collective unconscious, 10% myth. And the best thing about collective unconscious Although this is something that is just, you know, retaining from the change that they made in Endwalker is that when you flash it, it's, it applies mitigation for 5 seconds and it's in a 30 ohm radius. So if someone could be standing away from you in Narnia, you flash it and then they're going to get the mid just for those 5 seconds. And then we also have Sun Sign at level 100, which is just another, you know, 10% mid. And then that's not even taking into account all the single target off GCD myths that it has, the, you know, exaltation, intersection, the, one of the cards provides a 10% myth. It's just a really good class that when you combine that for either helping out tanks or in the specific part in Extreme 2 where melee DPS take a lot of damage because of a mechanic, it helps that you're able to provide that extra protection to them even though white mage does have its equivalence in the form of divine 
like Venison and Aquavail. A big thing to know about those abilities is that Venison only lasts for 15 seconds while Intersection lasts for 30 seconds. So in some situations, it could feel like you have to time your Venison uses, whereas Intersection you just toss it on and you know it's just going to survive long enough because it's a 30 second duration on the shield. You know, food for thought on something like that. And speaking of all those mitigation tools and neutral sec, that's, you know, just leads back into another pro I have here, which is if your shield healer dies, you can keep people alive and still recover very well because the life speed change of giving it a reduced cooldown and a charge system means that you will have access to a five second cast time on your revive in battle honestly for an indefinite period if you want to withhold the charge just for progression purposes you know i think that is a really strong thing to have that you as a healer can bring up you could bring up one person with cast revive and then you could bring up two people in 10 seconds with light speed revive I think that's pretty strong, personally speaking, because even though like your party can run like a res mage, like a, a red mage or a summoner, you have the option to just have your caster just play Picto and then have your astrologian do all the reviving. And then if for some reason your astrologian dies and you know the other shield healer can revive them, then they can revive anyone else, right? You know. Even though that, yeah, it does kind of put more emphasis on you was having to play well so they could revive everyone. I think it's still worth the trade-off for the fact that Astrology can do that. And I just think that these other pros I have for Astrology, you know, the Macrocosmos is a really strong ability for healing and damage output in, like, AoE situations. Another big thing about that ties into the fact that the, all the healing options are delayed in the Astrologian Toolkit. So, for example, you could do something like press Horoscope, which has a 60 second cooldown. But then, if you combine it with Helios or Helios Conjunction, it turns the Horoscope into a 30 second buff. So, you have this Horoscope heal that is now active on everyone that will occur in 30 seconds. And after those 30 seconds expire, the initial horoscope ability that you still have that was on cooldown during that time is not going to be back up in another 30 seconds so it's one of those things about that that I like where you can actually delay the heal coming out for when the specific damage instance occurs and you get full value of that as well as the fact that you're going to have it back up immediately soon because of the way this ability functions you know it's the same thing with how macrocosmos is kind of like a delay but between microcosms activating for 15 seconds or if you want to reactivate manually uh, a big important thing about the manual reactivation though is that there is a range to that so if someone is out of range then they have to actually wait the full duration of the timer to get the microcosmos heal so all those things are just really great reasons for why i think astrology is just pretty good although i will say the greatness comes with its downsides. The main downside being that there is a massive gap between the ceiling and floor of play for an astrologer. You have to practice and play this class and be really good at proactive gameplay to excel in it. Because if you are not proactive with this class, your healing output and your damage output is going to be so much lower than what it should be to the point where you you might ask yourself okay if i'm this dog shit at the class i might as well just play white mage because even though i may not be able to provide as much damage to my party i can at least provide the healing and the utility so that people can actually you know live and continue progressing in the raid right so Speaking of, you know, those comparisons between White Mage and Astro, there's also the fact that Astrologer's mobility tool, which is light speed, even though it does have two charges now, one of those charges will always be reserved for your two minute 
first windows, since you have to do a lot of double weaving in those windows. And because of that, that means that that other charge that you have that's going to be, you know, building up in, in you know, those odd minutes, you want to plan when you want to use those, like, charges within the fight. And, you know, and this was tying back to what I was talking about, the whole proactive gameplay of Astrologian, where you have to plan where you use your light speed versus a white mage that's going to just be able to just, you know, press Athlos Rapture every 20 seconds, has misery every minute for movement, can even use Ethereal Shift or Glare 4 in its two minute burst windows for movement. So that's, you know, bring that movement that automatically gets while you as an astrologer, you have to like work hard. And that's just, you know, it like when you do work out as an astrologer, you do get the value out of it. So it's not too bad, right? So even though you do need to have that planning and foresight for this kind of like class, I think it's well worth that additional effort because something that I noticed about myself personally is when I got really good at playing astrologer at a like really good competent comfortable level, it made me play every single fucking healer in this game a lot better specifically because you learn how to slide cast a lot better as an astrologer and you learn how to plan your movement a lot better as an astrologer because i feel all the other healers have more convenient movement tools scholar has ruin too sage has toxic and phlegma and compared to that astrologer has a cooldown that has to plan out basically in a fight you know again it's not a bad thing it's just the fact that you have to put that additional effort to think about when to use it but at the same time though even though you do have to go that extra mile at the end of the day it still feels satisfying to do and you feel like your gameplay is being rewarded very well in terms of the satisfaction factor because i feel like a big thing that's missing from this game when it comes to playing certain classes that you miss the satisfaction of playing well a good example again even though i'm a i'm a healer player a good example is whenever i just randomly decide to play summoner and dancer in pve and i go oh i wish it felt like i was playing this well but it kind of doesn't since i'm kind of just you know pressing buttons and just doing mechanics so that's just, you know, things to just think about where if you want to have fun in your raids and have satisfaction while doing it, I think Astro is a really good pick. If you just want to have a lot more lenience in your gameplay and you want to just be able to focus more on the mechanics of a fight rather than your actual like rotation or abilities, you can see White Mage being the go-to for players of that nature, for better or for worse. And not to say that I don't dislike the fact that White Mage exists as a whole, because I think the fact that it just plays completely different from Astrologian is good. I just wish that White Mage just had a more engaging system of some kind that wasn't the lilies because what i hate about the lilies system in place right now is that it's a very use it or lose it type of system where if you don't have to do any healing within that one minute window of building lilies then you waste the opportunity to use misery and at that point, you basically just burn all your lilies to use the misery, even though, realistically speaking, you would think that for something like that, you would wish that you could just, you know, keep them in stock like Sage's Adder's Goal. But, you know, it's a very binary way of having to play White Mage because of that. So basically, all you, the things that you do as a White Mage, if you want to play optimally, are tied to the fact that you have to burn those lilies because losing out on the misery use in the fight is pretty huge. So I'm hoping that this video was much, much better than my old one. And I'm also hoping that I gave some good discussion points and talking points about both of the regen healers. You can feel free to ask me any questions about my thoughts on anything in the comments. If you have any specific questions about any of the healers in any type of way, 
like if you want to get better at them or want to have advice or struggling with something in them feel free to let me know because i'm always down to give tips and help people and i feel that i'm in a good position to do that just because i have very strong gameplay with those two classes in the current extremes if you really want to look on my ff loss page you can i'm on gilgamesh see my character name is eater star so i'm like i said i'm open to just any communication any feedback of all kinds so i hope you had a cool time hearing me rant about playing reach and healer in this game because i'm just a big astrology fan right now just because of the fact that it just provides that fun and satisfaction when you play and execute it very well like not many other healers in this game have and i hope that in the future when 8.0 comes that they find a way to incorporate that feeling of satisfaction in playing healer and all the other ones so take care have a good time